breath after everything. Gentlemen, Bradley, that guy's national treasure. I'm just going to say it right I, now. That was I, that was a delight. I, I, I want to start this off because, uh, Pyra, I know we, uh, you know, feel the same way about this, but that was a very d and ds set that I was seeing in the background right there. <laughs> you were mentioning it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was seeing a little bit of the castle in there. I'm, and, I'm uh, about to head over yeah. to TLEHQ and start rolling some he, dice. He had some good set dress, and I was talking to him in the setup. He's like, you know, I want to make sure the Honda is visible as well. Like, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell you about the shout-out. Uh, it's Bradley. Manager, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if this whole pro play thing doesn't work out, he could he could certainly do set design. Anyways, um, but yeah, gents, like that series, they they brought it back. It was long. It was it was very very tough, but I think it shows the resilience that Team Liquid Academy have. Team Liquid shows a lot. Uh, but you know, because that series was so long, uh, we're actually behind our schedule. So I think we gotta hop into uh, uh, our last match for Super Week. We have had honestly great transition. I love it. We got IMT Dignitas coming up after this one. Great. It is going to be fantastic. You know, if you remember, you viewers, back to the start of the day. Start when we talked up a matchup, some trash talk, some spice between the two junglers of this team. It seems like it was so long ago. We'll get into it in a minute. I'm giving, I'm giving a little preview here. But let's take a look at our starting lineup here. We got to go ahead and look at Immortals Progressive Academy. These guys certainly have shown some strength and certainly have some strong words, especially out of Chad there in the jungle. Yeah. It's, uh, I would say that IMT's split has been a bit rocky, uh, as I will say, they're having a big super week, a 2-0 over TSM, a 2-0 over EGA, they have the potential to have a 6-0 going up against Dignitas, another team that's posturing in the middle of the standings, sitting at 7-7, seven and seven. but for Immortals, this team kind of feels like Jekyll and Hyde, like, if, if Chad gets off to a good start, the way that him and Pretty can work and snowball a map, and kind of win the side lanes are great. I've seen some games from Arrow and Joey where they're smurfing, other games where they're getting smurfed on. I just want to see some more consistency out of this team because I, I really believe in Pretty Chad being able to work together and try and find some sort of balance between a team that always feels like they're pulling out different strats, different looks, very flexible in spring. They've kept that for summer. Uh, and it's a good test going up against Dignitas, who, again, I feel like are better than what their record shows at 7-7. Seven and seven. I, I really feel the exact same way when it comes to the mid jungle of uh, Immortals on this one. Um, just pretty. How many times have we had Immortals games where it's been the pretty show, where he's just solo carrying 1v9? Yeah. He is a disgusting mid laner, uh, has the highest KDA at 7.6, at least so far in this week. Uh, Chad uh, paired alongside with him, who has been one of the more creative junglers in this scene. I really love watching him because at the start of the season, he starts off with Rengar, they start banning away. It's like, all right, time to pull out the Cossix, gets that going as well. So always looking to do fun, exciting things on the Rift is uh, Chad when it comes to jungling. He's certainly not the only one, though. We do have to take a look at the Dignitas lineup. Their opposition today are going to be trying to find the wins back in their favor. And like I mentioned, there has been uh, a little bit of spice coming out between the two junglers. I do think coming into this week, we had a little bit more critique for XU, but it seems like he stepped up a bit. I mean, he did just kind of get monstered on by Shaden, or Shaden, I should say, in game one yesterday. That's uh, that's true. I'll grant you. But, uh, yeah. I, I think, think it was improvement still in some cases. I, again... Axu, you, you know, these guys are so competitive, and they're very self-critical. It's part of why they're here. I, I always like when players are honest about where they're playing, because when I saw Axu week, week one, he wasn't playing the best league I've seen from Axu. But I think that in the two weeks uh, we've seen since then, he's really started to turn it around and get back to that form uh, that we were so excited about in spring as this young player that has a great ability to start fights on his own uh, and also has some really creative early pathing to help get himself and or his team leads. Uh, and the more flexible... Uh, that we see Axie's champion pool, his play style become, uh, the more appealing that he becomes. I think we're seeing him still try to push the envelope there and has a good chance to do something today against Chad as, of course, uh, some choice words were traded, and I'm hoping to see both of them back it up on the Rift. I think that makes a lot of sense. This team has definitely uh, found a couple of people that not only like to say quite a few things, but also occasionally back it up. Insanity is another one of those players that I think really likes the snack talk. Let's take a look, though, at some of the play that we've seen out of him and also out of Pretty, since I know you did mention that quite a lot. Yeah, and insanity has been such a fun mid laner to watch because he really doesn't care. He doesn't give a damn. He will fight. He will skirmish. He will bring everything, even the kitchen sink, the champion ocean, everything to a team fight. And he's been such a big part of Dignitas finding the wins that they've had uh, acquired. 
Oh man, the, I mean, we, we we just spent a series talking about Spyrax as Azir. I know that Insanities is only three and two, but he's been really good with the oh, Azir. Yeah. And I've liked some of the looks that Dignitas have had as well, like pairing up artillery mages with Nami. We saw it a bit in the last game with Nami plus uh, Nami plus the Blanc, <laughs> uh, and I think we've seen it a bit with uh, you know Nami Velkaz has been a combo we've seen from Dignitas a couple mm -hmm. times. Insanity showing off some of that deep mage champion pool that he has available to himself, uh, but. Honestly, all the hype about Insanity, I, I feel the same way and more about Pretty. I think that Pretty has been a beast to start off this year. Oh, yeah. Absolutely a, a stud. If, if you watch any of the games uh, from Immortals yesterday, he ended a Talia game in the mid lane 14-0 and 14. He is pretty devastating. And... Um, you know, being paired up with the talent that he is paired up with, you know, Chad and him work pretty well together. I also want to bring up another player over towards the top side, Vital. This is someone they've been developing together and I think has a lot of promise being alongside Pretty once they're able to get him uh, to be more than just in that team fight phase to actually start yeah. working into the laning. I also think it's worth noting that Pretty in that Talia game we just saw went 14-0 and 14 against EGA. Like, actually looked like he was Wilt Chamberlain on the Rift. Uh, it was just a crazy game. Yeah, that, this, I mean, that, it's just absolutely ridiculous seeing a scoreline like, like that put up. But, you know, I, I think we do have a little bit of an extra treat as we're getting ready to get into game because we talked about it and saw it at the beginning of the day. But for all of you that are just Hit tuning in, especially thank you, the LSC fans, let's take Great. a look at what Chad and XU had to say about each other. Chad wanted to, like, make enemies with everyone so that he would have, like, a personal vendetta, but I don't think Chad's that good. Uh, I don't know, this next dude guy, like, barely got six last split. He, like, barely didn't go to the amateur gulag. I don't know how he's barking. It, it's kind of crazy. I think he's just going for, like, a lot of plays that, like, are high risk, high reward, but they're not really panning out the way they should. Like, I watched his game against FlyQuest where he, he did the level one invade on Yuji, and then... He got pushed out and had to base and lost his whole top side. Like it was, it was, it looked really bad, you know. I mean, I mean, they only have one good player on their team, and it's their mid laner. After that, it like completely falls <laughs> off. So if Insanity doesn't decide to like single handedly carry the game, it's it's not even close. You know, their top worst. He has to worse. decide. Is worse. <laughs> I mean, their mid's worse too, All but right. Insanity's just you know they're only like even good player or even decent. You know, everyone else is just <laughs> especially exit. You know what I mean? I would just play normal. I think if I play normal, I'll beat Chuck. That never gets old. <laughs> we weren't kidding when they said they traded words. Uh, you, you know, uh, it's 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 been fun to see. I, I I think that deep down these guys like do somewhat respect each other uh, on the rift, and you know part of the reason they like to you know poke and banner is that they are the same rookie class uh, coming up. And I feel like Chad always feels like he has something to prove. Always likes to play with a chip on his shoulder. And X is kind of the same way. Someone that you know dropped out of college to actually do this. Uh, and th so to kind of see them push each other, uh, not only like push their each other's buttons off the rift, but also push each other on the rift. I've always found very fun and excited to see this matchup today. Absolutely. We'll see if they're going to be able to push uh, their own buttons properly as well. I think we're getting ready to get into game, but uh, Covey, Deserux, I mean, any, any last words on this matchup before I'm going to let, I'm going to send you off, send you forward to see how the game goes underway? I, I will just say, um, we had a trash talk to Megaman. I need people to put their money where their mouth is. Um, Chad, I feel like, is the one who's most willing to do that because I feel like he's almost permanently limit testing uh, in some of these games. Uh, XU, he's been so far so clean. One of the best uh, warding junglers out there when it comes to both clearing wards and uh, putting a lot of deep vision in to track the enemy jungler. So put your money where your mouth is, bring that trash talk to the front, and show up on the rift. All right. Well, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get us into champs like Take It Away, Cubby, and Deserux. <laughs> All right. This is the matchup I've been waiting for, Cubby. Mm. Mortals Progressive versus Dignitas Academy. I've been hyped up on this one. They're around the same area when it comes to the standings. They've been having very similar performances. So, you know, only one will be climbing the ladder here today, going one place a little bit higher. We'll see who it's going to be. No Jungle Wars banned. Off the bat. And for Immortals... I gotta imagine, this could be an early Talia pick. But Pretty was so... First pick, Renato? Okay. All right. All right, well, uh, this is new. New fresh stuff from IMT. <laughs> As Joey's Renata, I will say, his Renata, he is one of the best Renatas that we have oh, yeah. in Academy. I, he 100%. picked this champ up instantly. He was one of the first people that I saw figure out how to use the alt as a zoning alt and then when to use the alt as a zoning alt versus an engage alt or a peel alt. I think that he has really good reason, this champion. Uh, but I'm just surprised, given the fact that we had Senna up, Lucian up, Wukong up, Talia up, 
that I am TU landed on first pick Renata. I, that, that is very surprising to me. And Dignitas are going to make them pay for that, taking the Lucian and the Wukong. And uh, to add to that, one of the things I've always loved about Joey's Renata is how he does flanking ultimates. He's done it quite a few times, did against Team Liquid, uh, did it yesterday in his matchup versus Evil Geniuses, where he's on yeah. the opposite side of the map. And speaking of that matchup he did yesterday, it was with this pairing. This is the answer that Immortals Progressive have been taking into Lucian Nami. It is the Draven alongside the Renata. What a treat to get Arrow's Draven. I, he's been known for this champion since he was holding the LCK trophy uh, over in Korea. The MVP that he held with Phoenix 1 in LCS. He was a Draven enthusiast. And maybe that's why they wanted the first pick for Nana. Pit them into Lucian plus Nami. And we'll see if Chad can make the most of also having the Graves into the Wukong matchup. Chad's Graves, something that was permabanned from Chad last summer. He knows Graves in and out. Uh, also used to room with both Shaden and Kenvi. Another two good Graves players where they would always bounce ideas off of each other. So we're having faith that Chad uh, can pilot this one into the Wukong. But looking at Immortals, a lot of it, I'm curious if they do any early game map splits. Just considering they have a lane that's as powerful as the, the Draven plus the Renata. And a lane that needs to get ahead like the Draven plus the Renata. Because if you get ahead as Draven, you can crush the game. And you can split a map with Graves to really help set your bot lane up for success. So that's what I'm looking at from Immortals. As at the moment, seeing a lot of bands being thrown at the top winners. Uh, Orin taken away. And also, worth noting, Vitals Yone. One thing I want to throw out there is, uh, I don't know if you watched that game yesterday, the Immortals uh, versus, what was it, Evil Geniuses, but oh, I, I only watched one big cash in came in from Arrow on the Draven. Do you know how much gold he made off of one kill? It was over 1k. 1500. Yeah, off of I one remember kill. that. That's without the actual kill gold itself, so. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, quite a bit of income that you can get if you're able to stack in those adoration stacks. But it also puts a target onto Arrow's head. If you can keep getting kills and keep lessening those stacks, then you can uh, stop that potential push that comes out from the Draven. Guys, that quirky band just screams that we're going to see a Talia uh, out of Immortals. And Talia is honestly it's looking pretty good right now. In, into, into a short range comp, has a couple dashes, and IMT need uh, gank assist and setup, as at the moment they're very lacking on the crowd control. And pretty, again, pretty is Talia in that series yesterday that you were just teasing, Deserex. 14 0 and 14. Yeah. I was not kidding when I said it was a Wilt Chamberlain stat line. I, it was filthy. That champ is up. I want to see Pretty lock it in. I feel like it is very, very powerful. And also would dissuade in a zero pick from Insanity, uh, which has been his best champion and the best champion for Dignitas we've seen so far this split. Pretty can be disgusting when he gets a lead and just starts bullying the other mid laners. Um, I, I, out of every single game I've seen out of Immortals, even with their record they have with the six losses, I haven't really seen a bad, bad Pretty game. He only had one, and that was against Spyrax's Akali. But other than that, all the other games played so far, Pretty has had phenomenal performances this summer split. But that Talia was left up. It's finally getting grabbed. The Immortals Progressive will lock it in. He's 2-0 on the champ. Uh, Vital also 2-0 on that Gwen in the early season as Insanity. Uh, we'll see what he ends up going with as he's flashing through his deep champion pool. I am not expecting to see an Ari. I'd be surprised we saw an Azir as, again, historical counter uh, against Talia. But it will actually be the Ari. Uh, curious enough, I was not expecting the Ari as Insanity has yet to play it. And we have seen Insanity, uh, some Ari angles opt for other champions, uh, a little bit more range, but... I think recognizing that with the Wukong, you can hit the one item power spike really hard with both Wukong and Ari. And I think Immortals are going to try and utilize that to... I should say Dignitas is going to try and use that to attack Immortals and maybe make some plays on this bot lane. Uh, as bot lane, Draven Renata into Lucian Nami. Very important that IMC get that lane ahead. They have ways to support it with the Graves. That's where they can do early game map splits. But Ari Wukong, once they get six, can really try and counter, really try and set that lane behind if they pay attention bot. But you were talking about the Talia pick, and I'm looking back onto that, and I see pretty on it. Every time we've so seen filthy. that Talia, man, it is so disgusting. It it's is so, so filthy. filthy. And you have a couple of tools to set it up, of course, uh, having the Renata to try and set up seismic shoves. Uh, Smokescreen makes it hard to see some of those seismic shoves coming in. And Pretty, of course, likes to take a lot of creative angles when he comes in with his uh, Talia. Uh, he's willing to cut a map with, his, uh, with the Weaver's Wall. 
to get any advantage that he can. He will frontline a lot of these fights just to get Immortals Progressive ahead. So yeah, watch out um, for Pretty in this one. You ready for this uh, from the Talia? Oh, oh, uh, oh we, we, we sure? can hop into the game. We, we'll, we'll talk about this as, you know, if we, we spawn on in. Uh, as, man, Pretty's Talia spawning out of the rift. We get a, get a nice zoom in from our observers as we read this all. We're going to build Pretty up as Wilt Chamberlain here. Ready for this? 2-0. Oh. 45 KDA. Surfboard. 80.5% KP. And averaging 1,174 damage per minute. Doesn't get much better than that, Cubby. Wilt Chamberlain, man. Doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> this is why we're going to be watching this mid lane. I Sanity, will say... You got to watch out. He is averaging being down gold to 10 uh, on this champ individually. So, you know, that is one knock. But no, nah, I, I think I take the rest uh, if we are pretty. And pretty, as a mid laner, I mean, one of the reasons we are so excited about pretty, he's been having a great split. Chad oh, yeah. oftentimes will set himself behind in the jungle to make sure that pretty is ahead early. But then pretty repays the favor later as pretty uh, second in gold differential at 10 in the league, averaging being up 156. Uh, as Immortals, Chad, actually didn't find the ward with the Sweeper. So, IMT might be... Or, Dignitas, I should say, playing with a little bit of information that IMT does not know they have, as it looks like both junglers will start their respective blue buffs. And again, I'm curious to see if Chad goes for any early map splits, because with yeah. Talia Graves, you have the capability to do so. I'm going to be watching Chad's jungling now that he didn't spot that ward. Uh, as you said, it's information that Dignitas have that uh, Immortals do not now. And uh, I'm looking for Chad's plan here. Um, it's still too big. Still being able to watch over that Raptor camp, he would see if XE was in that area. But yeah, Chad is going for the invader right spotted. here. Spotted. He yeah. He's going to be spotted, so it's going to prompt a response to come out of XE. Nice ward, though, from Dignitas doing some Very. maybe clever scouting as Insanity will be spotted. So I think Immortals now knows, uh, hey, I think Dignitas know what's going on. Uh, as Chad still, he doesn't have the smite, so Insanity pulling this. XU has smite. If oh, XU gets here, it's his. Yeah, XU's here. As you said, he has the smite, so he's able to secure it. Chad, double wrong three, place double to buffs. be. This is one of the things that XU was criticizing Chad Leo. for, but now it's pretty with the backup. So bringing in the buckshot Ooh, flash, flash away coming out from Chad. We'll throw out the end wow. of the line and get the pop onto XU. The fight's not done, yo. Vital trying to survive over here. Walks uh, into I'm insanity. Sidesteps and Chad hops forward again. Uh, Chad with the early lead. We talked about pretty Talia uh, uh, pairing this up with the Graves. I'm so surprised they let this through, just given the track history of pretty on this champ so far. And a cat, he was so good on it yesterday. And it just opens up the books for exactly how Immortals want to play the game, which is free up Chad to do crazy stuff in the jungle because pretty and Immortals knows that they can back it up exactly what they did there as chad has already really thrown a wrench at the game plan for xu two kills picked up early for big boy chad he's gonna be loving that now in that position to kind of act as a carry for this squad in this early game already a beautiful start coming up from immortals progressive and of course that being paired with pretty we're talking about cutting the map mobility that they have together do want to take another look at that invade that came out. It was looking okay for Dignitas for a while, trying to get the reset onto the red buff. They had the smite yeah. there, the charm landed flush. I, I think we saw this yesterday with XU and Dignitas well in game one against C9, where if he walks away with that buff, XU's in great shape. He can just go walk down to his Raptors. Uh, he can he can take those. He's got Sanity supporting him. But then here, pretty, Talia, level two. You are so much more useful than Ari. I mean, look at how much damage the rocks do. Look at how much control you have. As Chad able to kite it out with the help of Pretty. Again, look at the damage from the rocks. They added a slow on that thing too, as if they aren't, weren't already strong enough early. And Immortals knows that both their champions are stronger early. And Chad has never been afraid to make plays. So he makes a big one there. And grants Immortals an early 1k gold lead is now. Axie's looking bot and Chad's here to answer. This could be big trouble. All right, setting up for the play. Spotting yeah, out Axie. Chad just looks at him and says, not, not my bot lane. You're not coming down here. He'll walk away, and Chad, right place, right time, tracking out where XU is. Just going to help his bot lane get a really clean reset. Chad going to reset himself, as he's got his camps to cycle out again. Hasn't even taken his Gromp or Wolves. We'll return to those. Should take the Crab as well, as Vital. Props to Vital. Uh, a, a rookie that 
I gotta say, you're pretty excited about Desirex. Uh, yeah. I know that with Vital, I've seen some nice team fighting angles. Not as great in lane, but we do expect that, especially from the players first starting out in Academy. I want to put you on the spot. Why are you excited about Vital? What, what, what are a few things that you've seen so far? You know, the volatility is all really comes down to. Vital, it's such a Ooh, volatile XU. lane. And speaking of volatility, a little bit of that happening into the mid lane XU. We'll dash forward onto Pretty. Follow through with the Orb of Deception. Gets pretty low, but he will be okay in the mid lane as Chad starts to hover. Watching where XU was going, oh, instantly cuts Chad. out that path yeah. to go for the Scuttlecraft. That was really nice from Chad, actually, just uh, dashing. Oh! So close. It, it was, was the so right close idea. To being nice. It was so close to being nice. It was the right idea. Xu gets one back though, as uh, Chad. Oh, your smite up. Yeah, surprisingly enough, uh, Chad not gonna fight that one out, as he is very much up in items early. Uh, I know we spent a lot of time talking about the jungle matchup just because things got so haywire. Worth noting though, uh, actually Spawn's doing a good job in this bot lane, just staying even. This is a tough matchup. For Nami Lucian. If you get caught out by Renata at all, uh, you can be very vulnerable to going down to the damage that Draven supplies, especially in the early game. So Spawn it does look like he's down two waves here, but he's about to catch a wave and a half. I'd say that he's playing this one on pace. Again, important look out for when it comes to Spawn. Player that we are really excited about when it comes to how he team fights in the later stages of the game. Uh, but we're always looking uh, for a lot of our academy bot laners to improve their landing phase. Uh, I think him staying even early, he's uh, ahead of schedule against Arrow, a champ that, uh, Arrow on a champ that he's historically been known for. And with that priority played into the bottom lane for Immortals Progressive, Jan just goes straight for Drake, realizes that's one of the benefits of having this Draven Renata lane, it is one that's almost exclusively going to be uh, perma pushed over here as Spawn attempts a little bit of engage, but it's just the harassment going on between the two. Oh, uh, Lucian Nami is something very, very comfortable for Spawn and JJ. It's something they played a lot, so... Arrow and Joey feeling pretty good about this pick going into it. Still hovering around is going to be Chad. And you can see that as the Lucian picks up levels with the Nami, things do get better. Uh, but... Chad... Gets better. Lying in wait. We'll pop no. the reset, but... Spawn... Gonna stay this point, not gonna dash in. Uh, but Dignitas at least trying to steady the ship a little bit. Still down 1.5k gold. Talked a lot about uh, Immortals and their early composition. Dignitas they do have scaling options. And I, we'll have to see how Spawn's able to team fight on the Lucian. Because there isn't a lot that is stopping the Lucian besides Pretty's Talia. And of course Gwen going immune. But honestly Lucian is one of the better champs to pilot into the Gwen. At least have the ability to dash and play with a lot of your range. So, uh, see if Spawn can make the most of that. As Lucian's been good so far this split. Uh, see if he can step up in this one. XU and Chad now pathing into the same direction. Chad is just clearing another camp with priority established by Tony Top onto the top side. Ooh. Uh, XU and Insanity going to pull off and goes for yeah. the Herald. Important note, JJ has first move. We'll get spotted if he does cross in the river. So spotted now by Immortals. Immortals knows that Dignitas' bot lane will be... First to answer, but Immortals are strong really on the top side of Vital. He's caught. Ooh, a strong engage on the Vital. Hextech ultimatum. A lot of damage. Does the job to take down Vital. And now, Dignitas able to grab that. IMT pulling away Dignitas from the Herald. With the man disadvantage, Dignitas might be looking to fight. Oh, uh, Chad. Ooh, Cyclone comes out. Chad walking right into the fire. We'll get Chad? shut down by XU. Questionable mistake coming out there. Now pretty yeah. bringing in the seismic shove onto insanity. Just a little bit more poke going through. I'm very surprised that Chad dashed forward into that brush. Uh, I, as wild as that seems, uh, Vital actually has TP back up. I think that both teams are just going to reset and fix the wave states. Uh, but Dignitas really punishing a couple mistakes there from Immortals. Vital trying to join the team to get turned on as Dig had first move in the river. And then Chad dashing forward. Big mistake. Taking another look at that. Hextech Ultimatum. Uh, when it comes to ganks, Hextech Ultimatum is just so good at locking down. And there's nowhere for Vital to go. Uh, you know, you, you do take Teleport Ignite over on Gwen. But yeah, even if you have a Flash there, you're still doomed. I, I think that approaching that wall was a mistake. Should have waited for his team to maybe get a little bit closer. As Chad... Yeah, that Smokescreen was uh, not worth it as... Almost gets enough damage in the Axe, but that second 
uh, bounce back if the Q does not land. And out of spawn. It actually looks like Immortals, as crazy and haywire as that was. Wow. Uh, Chad, during the replay, was able to pick up the Rift Herald on his own. Looks like no more blood was sacrificed. But again, uh, part of the reason this happened, Immortals, because the bot lane of Dignitas moved, uh, Immortals, their bot lane was able to crash that wave bot first during the replay, and then I think they rotated up. So, actually a really smart move from Immortals to help secure themselves that first objective. Curious about Arrow, if we can get the camera on him. I want to see how many stacks he's cashed in so far. Not cashed in, excuse me, but waiting to Stacked cash in. 227. So get the already. NASA's treatment, you know? Yeah, that's a good yeah, chunk. You check he, in. He just needs to cash in. We're just waiting for that big moment. Thing is, Chad... I mean, I feel like Arrow's already cashed in this year. Uh, players plug, is this the time to do it? Oh, oh, right, yeah. 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 I hope Arrow cashed in from that, man. That's uh, <laughs> I haven't seen episode 5 yet, but that's on the to-do list after we wrap up our Super Week. Work comes first. As Arrow going to work on this mini wave, still stacking up the Draven stacks. I still think the move for Immortals is things have slowed down a little bit. Pretty has access to the Weaver's Wall, and I want to see the first move that Pretty ends up making. Yeah. As does have the ability to impact both of the sides. As uh, Vital going to start to get in the position uh, where once he picks up that Leech and Weir, things get a little bit nicer for him as Spawn. Beautiful ult. Gets Arrow very low as Spawn. Again, we were asking for him to, eh, you know, keep on buffing up that waning phase. That was a really nice ult. All the cooldowns were down. Point around that was good, and we'll force Chad to show in this top side. Dignitas have to respect it. We'll back off. Flash is available for Dignitas as bot lane. Not under too much threat here, but Chad does have that Rift Herald. So coming here to cash in for Arrow, XU over in the bot side will secure that Drake seeing Chad up there. Uh, Harold still on the clock. They're going to take some plates down first to get those defenses up before they put down the Herald. So now just grabbing the Ocean Drake will be Dignitas. Immortals on the top side. Should be three plus plates going over to IMT as they're back on track, trying to snowball this one forward. At IMT have a lot of champions that are very, very strong in the early stages of the game, so... I think the fact they're cashing in here is really important. And because Dig were making a move for that second dragon, they did pick that up for themselves. They are late to respond. So first brick going over to IMT. Maybe. Not yet. Maybe not. Those stacks, they add up. Yeah, but, okay, so Dig, Dig responded. They do prevent first brick, but now mid wave. Uh, Insanity will lose that and potentially could open up a window for Pretty to have a Weaver's Wall go bot if he so wishes instead. Maybe a plate and JJ. Ooh, here comes the tidal wave, but Arrow's gonna cash in. Takes out JJ in a heartbeat. The hostile takeover splitting up spawn, and JJ was not able to flash out. Nice find from Joey. As Arrow now. Uh oh. He's no got a dice. Good chunk of gold okay. In. That's huge for IMT. You can see that gold lead. All of a sudden, it is 3k in their favor, and Axie is about to find the Chad. XU walks into the jungle, There's thinking the it's wall. its own, but it doesn't belong to him anymore. It belongs to Immortals. Pretty following through with the Weaver's Wall. Going to kick the Monkey King right out of his jungle as Immortals' progressive focus the top turret. There's the first brick falling. Chad going to take some camps as well. Even going to try and take this red buff, but spawn with the gates. Able to respond in time. Going to go to the Wayne. Good setup from IMT. I'd say even though the Weaver's Wall does not connect in a first kill, or I should say a kill, uh, does connect in first brick and some camps for Chad. Well worth it. That was the first use of the ultimate from Pretty. Looking good. All right, Observer, we need a new check-in. Uh, this time, how much was cashed in on Arrow? Just hover over that. I, I, I need to see. There it is. 752 gold 7, picked 5, off 2. of that kill. Not bad. Not bad at all. 4k gold lead for IMT. Draven can get very oppressive. He is allowed to get ahead. I will say, Dignitas have a lot of wheels, ways to deal with Draven, though. The knockups from Wukong, you can combo with Insanity, something that we did talk about slash set up earlier. The one item power spike from both Ari and Wukong is huge, as now spawn. Nice handshake. Uh, Arrow, barely getting out of that thanks to Joey. Del XU, itching to go for this engage right now, just hovering over the middle river. Taking a look at where Chad is, he's taking his recall right now, so a lot of pressure coming out from Dignitas. So they're going to put out the calling and try and get backs out of Immortals Progressive's bot lane. And again, one of the ways you can beat Draven using range and comboing as Draven 
doesn't really have any good ways to deal with range. The combo you can break, of course, uh, with the axe throw. Or I should say the E uh, from Draven. But we'll see if Dignitas can prevent Arrows Draven from running all over the map, knocking down these structures so far, Spawn doing a decent job of managing it. But I'm still really looking out to see if Axew and Insanity can sync up, find any plays. Give Dignitas a bit of momentum in this game. Because at the moment, uh, IMT's early game champions really cashing in. Now, we haven't talked too much about this top side, uh, Vital versus Tony Top. Overall, uh, with this Gwen versus Camille matchup, they've been going rather even, just matching each other straight out. Uh, Tony Top, the only one who's able to get the kill off of that one. Um, but usually does go pretty volatile, having the Gwen versus Camille. The first one to really get a lead starts to. Uh, Ex uh, explode a lot when it comes to that matchup. Yeah. So at the moment, uh, the Sunder Spike is where I really favor Camille. As the game goes yeah. on, once once Gwen gets uh, two, three items, I, I like Gwen in isolation. Uh, but of course, Camille always going to be valuable trying to blow up Squishies in the team fight. She's able to land a nice Hextech ultimatum onto the, onto the back line. So it could be really important when it comes to dealing with Arrow's Draven as Chad. Do you want to credit Chad? Uh, that aggressive dash over the wall, got Insanity's ult, and given where the waves are at, the fact that Dignitas for now won ultimate, that's all he needed to take that second Rift Herald for himself. And so much vision established by Immortals Over on this top side, where you have a deep push coming out from Pretty, keeping Insanity just really shoved in over here. You can see that vision denial as well. Dignitas, it's very dark in their own jungle. This lets Pretty just freely rotate from the top to the mid and back again. Okay. You know, just just a vibe check there on the spawn. Always got a vibe check. And we never know when they're just gonna you know, kind of accidentally yeah. fail it. I think we saw a little bit of that from Team Liquid in that last series. <laughs> uh, Insanity forced ult immediately. Tony Top actually bringing in the ult. Vital does spot him, though. As this is before the dragon, Chad a little bit low. But oh boy, in a position here. He already gets low Not before he can dig. pop the cyclone, and that's another kill going over the arrow. So another cash in coming through. Spawn with the calling Dignitas retreat, and just a really disjointed setup from Dignitas. Again, I I want to see the Wukong ultimate uh, get comboed into you know Ari Everfrost charms. Try and isolate a member, get a pick. You have a lot of. Strong damage at this point of the game with Dig. But they just do not seem like they're on the same page. And off the back foot, Immortals have really thrown a wrench in the plans of Dignitas. They've not been able to find any possible momentum on the Rift. Besides oh, that gross. Rift play where they picked up uh, Vital in the top side. Just haven't been able to find anything. Marksman Gold. 2.6k yep. separates yep. Arrow and Spawn. Oh boy. Spawn's in trouble now. Oh, here comes Pretty. Going after Spawn. Spawn will be able to get away, but JJ, same night, might not be afforded to him. He is going to flash and get away from the seismic shot yeah. in time, so it will be okay, but I just want to keep that eye on the gold of Arrow, Cubby, because my word, those two cash ins, and the one big thing about Arrow is he doesn't die often on this Draven. He is able to get those stacks to accrue. Well, I, I mean, I'm always hyped to talk about a Fed Draven, but I actually want to praise Pretty a lot for that wall. Just buying two flashes off two of the squishiest members of the Dig Dignitas really helps kill the, their momentum. And even though the Re Weaver's Wall wasn't really used to, you know, find an objective or maybe create a dive, it's still one way they were able to cheat tempo, find something positive for themselves, and try and turn it into more as Sanity. Trying to get out of this one. Did Everfrost Chad to prevent some damage, but Cyclone Pretty? comes out once again. Pretty in a bad spot. Joey and Arrow able to show up, but... Oh, oh. walks right into Arrow's cleave. Oh, Out comes pretty. the tidal wave. Pretty still alive. Chad will fall to spawn as Arrow Arrow's bringing stopped. the axes onto spawn. A lot of damage on the spawn. One more auto oh. goes through and Arrow outplays him. Oh, unfortunate for Dignitas as IMT, they did overreach there. But the shutdown going on in the Nami, real bummer. It was so close going over to spawn's Lucian, but Arrow... Flashing forward to get the shutdown, and then the way he played that to kite up, he was dead once he flashed forward, and everyone from Dig showed, but the fact he was able to get two kills out of it and get the shutdown to go on the Nami instead of Lucian, really important for the side of Immortals to at least salvage this play. And it, it was an 
interesting start coming out. I do like the idea for Insanity to put the Everfrost on the chat there to stop the advancements coming through. Pretty nice. But Arrow, man, he is so far ahead. He has so yeah. much damage. Uh, pretty, I mean, it, it, of course, it was a nice fight from game. Arrow, but that, that was just gorgeous from Pretty. Like, the stopwatch into the flash, again, they talked about how good his Talia is. Just using those skills perfectly as Arrow. The fact that he kept on autoing was able to get just enough Omni Vamp to sustain himself to make sure that shutdown did not go over to spawn. Instead, JJ sitting on that Imperial Mandate. It's not bad, but would rather have spawn at two items. Is now no flash on JJ. Oh, and no way for spawn and JJ to get over oh, that wall. Stuck? They're going to have to take wow. the long route. And unfortunately for Pretty, couldn't get to the bot lane of Dignitas right there. They're able to escape off to the side. Honestly, a big play by Insanity. Uh, the fact that he connected with damage meant that Pretty was forced to exit the wall. Ended up getting stuck up top instead of being able to chase the two squishies that were lacking flash on the side of Dig. Uh, so small play from Insanity, who has been quiet this game. Uh, a lot of it thanks to just the early chance that IMC had and the early game plan for Chad. But he's trying to get loud now. As here we go. Goes in. Perfect. Pops the Cyclone, lands it onto Arrow, so Arrow goes down. Perfect. Bailout, not enough to save him. And Dignitas suddenly... The one's making plays here. Out comes a charm. Able to pull in Insanity, but both able to bail away now in the top side. Should say the bot lane. It's the top laners. Hextech ultimatum goes out. Vital. Not long for this world. Or is he? Ooh. The tick. The flames. Tony top will survive. Chad now showing up. Looking to skirmish it out with XU. Smokescreen yeah, goes down. These. Couple more pops. And XU's realizing there is no chance in hell to win this fight. So Chad looking to just gun him down, slides away uh, using that clone, but one more buckshot to the face is enough to take down XU. Still Dignitas, good plays. I was asking for the Wukong Ori uh, combo to be used. XU and Sanity do sync up, find the most important member from Immortals to start off the fight, and are closing that gold gap a little bit. Only down 4k. I think Dignitas have ways to play this game out in the later stages. If we're going to get a replay initially. Really, really wow. good charm from Insanity, as that at least makes sure that Pretty can't get onto Spawn and JJ. And then the setup from XU, uh, the ability to find Arrow uh, on the back half as they clear out the vision. XU works his way around. The fact that they are able to start the fight onto Arrow is the reason that Dignitas are able to win this one. You can tell Pretty saw it coming. It sets up a seismic shove, but it's a little bit too late. Only lands yeah. onto the clone. Yeah, that pick right there. Especially able to back up and kite out the Draven while the bailout's going out to just let it time out. This was nice from Joey, by the way. Yeah, that uh, handshake. Yeah, the, that did force the flash out of Insanity and did save his life. So, uh, credit to Joey there. Some support mechanics. Love to see it. As IMT. Oh, they're melting this. That's theirs. Quick take the right there. Take five breaking out. Going golden. Nice it's going to be charm. pretty. So critically low. XU trying to get close, but pretty safe. Oh, got back out. Arrow gets Woo. another one. It's going to be on the Tony top. And now Joey fighting it out with XU. Will pop a couple more slugs oh, into no his way. back. The Monkey King will not escape again. Chad takes down XU. It's going to be two picked up for absolutely nothing for Immortals. That's Baron. Spites down. There's no TP on Tony top. He can't respond. And man, Joey, this first pick for Nana that hostile takeover was massive. That fight, Desterex. Found everyone in the choke for Dig. I was focused on Pretty as he was being chased by the side of Dignitas, but Joey's the reason that IMT win that fight. That ult was huge as IMT get themselves on Soul Point and take this Baron. Immortals progressive. A Baron now secured. Joey being so good on this Renata, and of course everyone else able to show up for that team fight to bring the damage needed to give a good lead over to Immortals progressive as they have 6k. Now benefiting them in their favor. We're going to take another look at that fight that happened around Drake. And keep your eyes on Joey, because that ultimate, Ooh. I mean, it just cuts any momentum that Dig had in its tracks, connecting on XU, forcing Tony Top to turn on his own teammates. As that's not, not what your game plan usually is if you're subbing in for this roster. Uh, unfortunately, for the side of IMT, Joey making it happen. They first picked that Renata for a reason. Uh, I, I was very curious with, uh, you know, all the power picks we had up, but IMT making sure that they're answering some of my questions as they've been very good. Uh, and especially Chad just dictating the pace of this game with Pretty. Been a good look as Immortals looking to shut this one down. It's those flanking hostile takeovers. Joey keeps going to that, has it in the wheelhouse, utilizes the Fox War, pops that way. Combo. Now the engage looking to come out from Dignitas. 
Get a chain of CC going on to Chad. Chad's staying alive, oh, though. Begin. Chad will back out. Chad will get away. Still objective bounty getting picked up by Dignitas, buying time over in this mid lane. Or Tony top in the top lane to grab a tower, but it's going to be matched over in the bot lane from Vital. The mortals try and set up a siege with this Baron empowered push. The response Ooh. from Dignitas is saving their inhibitor towers. And I, I think Insanity, he actually threw his combo at Arrow. It did get the cleanse, but I think he, Insanity believed that Chad would fall. He was trying to move on to the next target, but just moving on too soon. And now, they to move on to the next target. IMT, they have their sights on Tony Top. Good night, as Pretty finds another play for his team. He overstays. Not thinking that they would look to chase him down after that extension that Tony Top just did, but brilliant coming out of Immortals. Now a man down is going to be Dignitas. Fortunately for them, there are no major objectives to be gathered. Immortals AoE just going to focus on this final inner tower over on the top side. Look at the scores from Pretty and Joey, man. Sinking up. Mid-support mid synergy, baby. <laughs> I looked the wrong way for a second. I was looking at Pretty and Arrow, and I saw them in reverse. But yeah, synergy's there. The lanes that swap the most, right? Mid and support. <laughs> Ooh, Charm lands in. Everfrost lands in. Nice chain of CC. Chad. That's a big engage tool now down, and Chad's yeah, all by his own. lonesome. I don't know. Can he go into Giga Chad mode? Oh, nice Answer's going to be no this time. The calling puts him down. Spawn grabs that shutdown. Too aggressive from Joey as Dignitas already had a ward there, able to spot him out, and uh, Insanity. Chad said in uh, part of the trash talk, you know, Dignitas uh, has to be saved sometimes by Insanity. I believe that, uh, I believe in the words of Chad, Insanity was the only good player on Dig. Or, uh, the... Yeah, uh, while I wouldn't agree with that, frankly, uh, I would agree with the fact that Insanity made a big play there. Uh, landing the charm on the Chad, having the setup initially on the Joey. Getting Dig a little bit of gold in their pockets, but this next dragon is dire. Don't want that top left part of the screen fool ya. It, we, it is a Hextech soul, uh, the most powerful soul that we have on the Rift SRX. And IMT have their sights set. I'm taking that, and honestly, XX Soul would spell doom for this game. So, the fact they have complete control here early is good. Have to keep so our eyes out for Wukong, Ari, and if they can execute anyone on the side of Immortals, because all four of their carries have flash up. They're trying to set up the lane states right now. You did have that push coming off from Insanity in the bot lane to try and get some agency over this Drake, uh, some control over this river. But IMT were faster on the resets. They'll be the first ones into the river, and there's still 20 seconds left on the clock before the dragon does spawn, but a firm footing coming out from IMT. Yeah, the only reason that Tony could have based there was because of the gates, as he's going to be able to hit his team in time, is XU. XU Ooh. vital. With he's chase. forced out. Uh, that's it. That, it. XU cannot get to dragon in time. If Immortals start this immediately, they could burn it before XU gets here. XU still trying to yeah, posture never mind. forward, though. Okay, okay. He's still in trouble, though. He's looking for the position. Rolling Death oh, goes man. out. A chunk of damage onto XU. Oh, wait, watch the rest the back of are flanking the rest of Immortals. But out comes he the lost. hostile takeover once again. Now Vital trying to clutch out. Trying to get that splash damage onto JJ, but has XU. to back away. Hollowed Miss is not going to be enough. Time. Look at the back end of Dignitas. Come through and flank the rest of Immortals to take a team fight win. Spawn with a dash forward, and suddenly Immortals, everything they They've gained being thrown away off of Hold one on. fight. Wait, Hold Chad on. able to get one kill back, but Insanity surely cleans it up. It will go through. An ace for Dignitas. That was the greatest global taunts I've ever seen. As XU, just the monkey business, walking Immortals around, taunting them to try and take down the smite. They couldn't find him. And it opened up the back half to be so vulnerable. Because watch this. Just Chad video. Pretty, they focus on XU. But look at Joey, Arrow, Vital. They're all alone. It's a 4v3. Your most fed member is just absolutely executed by Tony Top. No help from Pretty, from Chad. And XU lives the entire time. And it's... I, what in the world? What in the world? It's like a, 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 a lion walking away from her cubs, right? You, you left them defenseless and... Uh, Right away, you get this assault, this assault coming through from Dignitas. So brutal it was on that flank. Completely undefended was the backline of Immortals. You know, big props to Dignitas for engaging on that and you know, spotting that out so fast they went through. And a big mistake as the Goldie cut into. We like the simplicity of Dignitas' comp as things go late and also spawn on the solution. Keep on hyping up Spawn, his ability to position in team fights. That Sereldas will help him buy some more space, especially against Arrow. 
And we'll see if Spawn can make good use of it as uh, pretty at the moment. He's hunting down Tony Top. There is no hook shot at the moment from the Camille. Everfrost oh, going to set up a very, very good easy ult. seismic shove, but a good ult coming out from Tony Top. Uh oh. X Tech ultimatum keeps him alive. Now Tenny, he's able to join the fight. Throws out the Everfrost. Pretty gets sacrificed oh. here in Vital. Look at 1v4. Baron. Look at Baron. Bad spot to be for that duo, oh, they're off. but the rest of Immortals. They pulled off? They didn't go after Baron. Immortals. Wow. Are you really going to give us a game crazier than what we already had today? Did you even see Team Liquid Academy versus FlyQuest Game 1 and, frankly, Game 2 as well? Uh, this was a big problem for Immortals in Spring. Their ab ability to close out games. And I know they have uh, mostly the same roster. Arrow was in and out of the team, of course. Vital being the only change. But I feel like the focus of Immortals has been very tunneled uh, throughout this game. And it's really hurting them and giving Dignitas yeah. a legitimate window to get back in. It's 6k gold 30 minutes in. That's not the end of the world, uh, especially given, uh, you know, how hard some of the champions from Dig, Tony Top, if you're able to get on top of someone, you can take him out. Spawn on the Lucian with the Nami. He's something that's very scary to be dealt with. Immortals don't have the best tools to really deal with him. So we're just going to have to see if Spawn can make this happen. I 5-2-5. Insanity's been the one that's really been the playmaker, setting things up, but Spawn is the one that has to knock it down with the damage as things move on. So, all eyes on the the two carries here for Dig and Insanity and Spawn. If they are able to sync up, are able to find some more picks, positive plays against the Immortals, because Immortals, you just see on the control of the map, Tesserax, they are not crossing the midpoint anymore. It, it, this real estate is pretty even. And almost all flashes are up for Dignitas. You're just waiting for Spawns. You look over, Pretty doesn't have his. A crucial target he would be to be able to get a pick onto. But we'll take him down. Arrow still having everything available, including a stopwatch on top of that. So he can buy a lot of time to be saved, or be protected, or just get the rest of Immortals into position in time to make sure he's going to be fine. But he has to land those autos, and they're getting pretty heavy now, as already almost a full build is going to be Arrow. It's pretty doing well on top of that. Black Lever with the Gore Drinker going for the tank build. Now only has the Negatron in terms of magic resist, so Sanity can do pretty well battling in the chat for this one, bringing the damage into Chad. See what Immortals can do as we still have Baron on the table, minute and 30 seconds before the dragon spawns. Big key for the side of Dig. All flashes are up for Immortals. Pretty's flash comes up pretty soon. As you might get hunted here by insanity. Pretty, you should not push this wave. This is a big mistake. Okay. Do you, do you, do you have a feed into his, uh, to his headset? Pretty's a good player. He knows that one. <laughs> he, he didn't fall vulnerable. Nah, that was Coach Cubby right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's one where... If, uh, yeah, that, that's a discussion if you push that wave after. But pretty... Gonna set up the slow push. We'll now reset as Immortals debating whether or not they want to play around this Hextech Soul or Baron. I think the answer should be the Soul. Absolutely. Trying to make sure they have some sort of vision on Baron in case Dig try and sneak it. Uh, as Here we go. TP's mid. This means that Pretty cannot reset if he does get chunked out. Uh, Dig and Fast do not have a, a ton of tools they can use to chunk out the enemy members. And I think the TP well used is uh, Pretty. Speaking of chunks, Ooh. oh my goodness. Already to start that off, XU losing half his health. Good spot for Immortals to be in, to lead into mm -hmm. this one. Considering XU is the jungler, does have the smite. Things are dark. Take him down, no smite fight. Secure the dragon quite easily there. Chad still Vitals. posturing up, looking vital on the flank. Vitals on the angle, as oh, Vital is actually able to sneak in. Thinking about it. Oh boy. Trying to go on to Vital now. Spawn yeah, going to follow through. Vital. The rest of Dignitas going in. Out comes the Whirling Death, and Vital is down. But out comes the Weaver's Wall. It's going to isolate some members of Dignitas. Insanity not in the base place to They're be. Trying to burn it. Out comes the Hostile they Takeover. It. It's secured. Immortals are able to grab the Dragon Soul. They will also take XU down. It's going to be a trade. Vital for XU. But the big thing here is that Hextech Soul picked up for Immortals. 
And I think we're seeing some of the youthfulness uh, from Vital Show, as I think his positioning has been a little bit tough around these objectives. Dignitas have punished really nicely with Tony Top. Oh boy, Pretty. Tony Top dives deep onto Pretty, but Pretty is able to back Lots. off. The cooldown's Lots. not available for Tony Top anymore. The Guardian Angel gonna be popped here. Now look at Arrow go. One auto did that, and it's chasing away oh. Insanity. Now we'll finish off Tony Top. Plus 508, more money into the Arrow account as Oh man, these axes, they sure are bapping the side of Dignitas. <gasps> oh, he oh. flashed forward, he's just going right after him! Arrow lands right on the money! He needs to finish the job right here, you need to take Insanity down, tries to oh, buy no? time! But it's not gonna be enough, they couldn't get the kill, they couldn't get the assist to keep Arrow alive. Oh, Vital caught Rejoining it. the fight, it's gonna be Vital, goes after Insanity, clips down We're Insanity now, looking onto XU. He's gonna have to pull off a 2v1 right here, but I think he might be able to do it. Spawn over the wall, looking to bring some damage. Pretty's here. Now Vital walks back, gets kited by Spawn, oh. Pretty rejoins, throws a rock oh. into the face of Spawn, and with a shutdown, with an ace, Immortals win the team fight. Oh, it was so close from spawn on the back half, but Vital able to make up for what happened around the dragon comes in, cleans things up as this game, it's going long, it's bloody Desterex, it is what we were promised as both these teams thrown down across the rip arrow, trying to end things early, but the stopwatch from Insanity buys enough time, and then the ability for spawn, this Seraldas, his ability to kite out the low range comp from both I and T, spawn played that yeah. wonderfully, flashing oh, yeah. into the fog of war too in that brush, on the back half, oh man, things get a little bit wild here as Vital, you are level 17 on this clan. You are fed out of your mind. Spawn trying to weave in here, but just cannot play over the wall. Honestly, if Axie dropped that ward sooner, I think Spawn was almost able to wrap this up. But he had, couldn't gale force uh, forward, couldn't gale force around. Vital takes him down with Spawn being late to respawn. Mortals use that time, take down the Baron. What a war between these two squads, but now Immortals Progressive sitting right in the driver's seat. They got the Dragon Soul from earlier, it's a Hextech one on top of it, they just picked up Baron. 36 minutes into this, they almost have a 10k lead, and Dignitas are waiting in the bushes right now. Immortals Progressive, not the wiser to this one, but there's nothing to push Immortals into that direction, Cubby. I, I think for the side of Dig, it's it's all about getting arrow. He has no summoner spells available, and it, it it's a tough ask. But again, you have Wukong, you have Ari. It, it that plus Camille, you can reposition very easily and attack arrow. But now you're staring down a 10k gold lead. It grew. It's Hextech Soul for IMT. You can see Spawn. He's really pumping out a lot of damage, but it's just it's not enough at this point. As Hextech Soul is so powerful at making sure. The plans of Immortals are able to convert, and the plans of Dig get thrown down. A base crack now. Inhibitor, turret going down in the top side. Led off of Vital with his Baron Empowered push. Dignitas trying hard to survive here. You gotta watch for spawn. You gotta watch for insanity. Insanity oh. can't be picked like that. That's Does it. go golden. Tidal wave goes out. It's already pick going through. Insanity oh, caught by the hostile takeover on oh. top of it. End of the line. It's collateral damage from Chad over the wall and pretty following insanity. Gonna send him right to the grave after rocking his world spawn off the respawn. Is now trying to make that final save for his base. Chad says no, and so do the rest of Immortals Progressive. Game number one. It was a vicious fight both ways but arrow getting one more cash into the bank account off of those adoration stacks it's gonna belong to immortals progressive the first pick Renata it pays off man Lucian Wukong you can let those things through but as long as Chad has his graves <laughs> pretty as is Talia and arrow gives one more donation over uh to be fair his bank account was pretty thick you know I appreciate arrow uh, being a superstar now sharing some of the love that's that's good you know do, do some charity work there, Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. He doesn't care about the KDA. You, you know how Arrow is. That was just for the meme. You gotta, you, know, you gotta throw one last one in out there, especially after that performance. But Immortals Progressive, you know, they showed up. There was a lot of team fights where it was getting really close, but Pretty and Arrow together, especially Pretty on some of these back-end plays, were able to clutch out. Please, for the love of God, ban this guy's Talia. I Don't feel like he's earned it. it. Uh, oh. Now, the DPM probably won't be over 1K again, which... Uh, the, that, that's going to be nice, but still, his ability to control the mid lane, to play make, to support Chad's crazy plays, it, it plays too much into the win conditions for IMT. Really want to see Dignitas take that out as we step into game two rather soon.
All right, while our teams get ready for that game two, we are going to throw it over to short break. When we return, we'll have Pyra back for our intermission. <laughs> 